Hello, in our video human testing in match play situations, the overriding feedback we received was... I think possibly moving from one ball to the other between games, you see the difference, whereas if you were just playing with one ball throughout the night, I think you'd very soon get used to it. Absolutely. So players believe they'll be able to adapt quickly, without much too much difficulty, to playing with the plastic ball. But what type of changes would they need to make to their technique? How would they need to adapt? To test that, I asked two players, Adam Linton and Kieran Bezik, who both helped me test the plastic prototype ball in 2012. Two players who didn't think much of that prototype ball. We were there and we're having a quick bang, 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 bang. A rat attack rally. We shouldn't go beyond three shots each if we're both playing really well. And it was going up wherever. Yeah. And you're hitting it full pelt, and it's just. And it feels like you've got time to play your shots. Loads of time. So points could last indeterminately. They don't have to bring back extra time. <laughs> For loopers. How our tests were done. I asked Kieran and Adam to carry out a basic exercise top spin drive loop, the backhand block, and some basic serve returns with both the dual of plastic and celluloid balls. I then analysed the footage using Kenobia and frame by frame in Premiere. In particular, I looked for differences in speed, ball trajectory, bounce, bat angle, point of contact and follow through. Now it's important to note two things. Firstly, I'm not going to be so presumptuous as to try and analyse Adam and Kieran's technique with the viewers saying what they do right and what they do wrong. That is not the point of this video. What's important is to see if their technique changed at all between using Dula Super P40 Plus plastic ball and their Super 40 celluloid ball. Secondly, we're only considering a couple of the basic shots in table tennis. Top spin drive and loop and blocking. To consider any more than that, plain styles and different shots, backhand drive, backhand loop, push etc. would simply have taken me too long to do. I don't have time to do that, sorry. Our results. Speed. Here's footage of Kieran's forehand topspin driving looping with Adam blocking. I chose this footage because it was the longest rally with each type of ball that I filmed with Adam and Kieran, so any difference in speed would be more noticeable. As a very rough guide of speed, I'm counting the number of shots that were played in the rally. The more shots played, the faster the ball's travelling. I've also motion tracked the trajectory of the ball and I slowed the footage down to help me make the comparative differences in speed more obvious. After 16 shots, the rally broke down, with the plastic ball marginally ahead. But would that be the same when Adam was topspin driving and looping? <laughs> this time the rally broke down after 15 shots, but it was a celluloid ball which was further ahead. Interestingly, look at Adam's positioning relative to the table. He typically is further away when playing with a plastic ball than he is with a celluloid one. And that means the plastic ball has further to travel. In Kieran's case, he remains a similar distance from the table. So the balls have a similar distance to travel. And as we've seen, there's less difference in the relative speed. So when measuring relative speed, which ball you find is faster will probably depend on your technique and how you adjust to the plastic ball ball trajectory and bounce. The rubbers you use, the hardness and thickness of the sponge, your technique, all these factors will impact on the trajectory of a ball. But here is the track footage from the two rallies you've just seen. And you can see there's little difference in the maximum typical height both the jeweller, plastic and cellular balls reach. Where there is a difference though is after the balls have bounced. Although the jeweller plastic ball bounced lower in our T3 bounce test, Surprisingly, in this rally, you can see that Kieran often made contact with a plastic ball at a higher height. For Adam, the reverse is true. Typically, it's a celluloid ball he plays at a higher height. So once again, it's a different result for different players. But this is just a single rally for each player. Here's a record of the points of contact each player made with both the celluloid and plastic balls over a number of rallies. Now we can see that Kira makes contact with the celluloid ball at both higher and lower points than the plastic ball. But crucially, he's always a similar distance away from the table. With Adam, it's different. Adam plays the balls at a similar height. 
However, it's his distance from the table which he varies. Typically, Adam starts close to the table and then moves back as the rally unfolds, and he moves further backwards with a celluloid ball. Two players adjusting their technique to the ball in two different ways. When it comes to blocking, both players take the ball over the table off the bounce, and there's less difference in how they block the plastic and celluloid balls. This would seem to suggest that you're going to notice more of a difference with these balls the further away you play from the table. But it ignores an important factor, spin. The more spin you generate, the more the ball's going to arc through the air, bounce and kick up and off. Could it be that the consistency in the bounce shown here by Jula's plastic ball is partly due to the fact that the plastic ball has less spin on it? Or is it due to the plasticity of the plastic ball and its limited ability to reform after a blow, at least when compared to a celluloid ball? And that limited ability means that there's less variety in how high it's going to bounce, something which we displayed or showed in our bounce video. I can't test for spin rates accurately, and it's not something the ITTF tests for in technical leaflet T3, although perhaps they should, or at least the coefficient of friction of balls, especially if spin plays such an important part in how a ball bounces. Backswing and follow through. Now let's have a look at Kieran and Adam's position and playing arm movement. Here's Kieran topspin looping, driving a ball from Adam. I've overlaid footage of the celluloid and plastic balls on top of each other so you can see clearly how the technique changes between the two balls. I've chosen this footage because it's the most similar piece of footage I have for both balls in terms of the starting point for each type of ball, the first bounce point on the table, the speed and height of the balls over the net and the bounce point on Kieran's side of the table. At this point Kieran's playing arm and body position is similar for both types of balls. As the celluloid ball reaches its peak bounce height, and the plastic ball is also at a similar height, Kieran's takeaway position is almost identical, as is Adam's ready position for his return. However, whilst the celluloid ball has reached its peak, the plastic ball hasn't quite. It's come through a little slower and bounced a little higher, and this is what Tony could have been describing from a match play video when he said this about the plastic ball. The ball seemed to pull up, so... It appeared to be slower because it pulled up and maybe bounced a little higher then. At the point the plastic ball does reach its peak bounce, the celluloid ball is dropping and Kieran has started the forward motion of his playing arm towards the ball, which is now marginally ahead of his playing arm for the plastic ball. At Kieran's point of contact with the celluloid ball, you can see the plastic ball is still higher and Kieran has adjusted to this by delaying his forward motion a little giving the ball a little more time to come through and drop to a similar height for the point of contact with his playing arm. Here, Kieran has made contact and the plastic ball is on its way back to Adam, noticeably behind the celluloid ball. But whilst the plastic ball is lagging behind, Kieran's playing arm position is now almost the same for both balls. And by the time Kieran's finished his follow through, it's identical for both types of balls. And the plastic ball has almost caught up with the celluloid ball at the net. This suggests Kieran has sped up or put a little more effort into his follow through for the plastic ball to accommodate the slight difference in bounce up off the table with the plastic ball. At the point both balls have bounced on Adam's side of the table, Kieran's recovery position is identical for both types of balls. But what about Adam's blocks? As blocking is done closer to the table, there's less opportunity for any difference in the bounce to show itself. Here you can see Adam's bat angle at impact and arm movement is very similar for both balls. The only really noticeable difference in Adam's technique is that he seems to be taking the plastic ball a little later and higher than the celluloid ball, which again seems to demonstrate the difference in how the plastic and celluloid balls bounce up off the table. And it's similar for Kieran too when he's blocking. Once again, the blocks the plastic ball slightly higher and further back than the celluloid ball. But everything else, bat angle, arm movement, is very similar for both balls. And this brings into question T3's bounce test for balls which is done with a static drop with no spin. When we tested the bounce using the T3 testing, on every occasion the plastic ball bounced lower than the celluloid ball. However, in this playing situation, when full momentum and spin are involved, the Jula Super P40 Plus plastic ball seemed to bounce slightly higher, or hang longer in the air before dropping. Once you adjust to these differences in bounce, the way you play the ball seems to be very similar for both types of ball with the plastic ball requiring perhaps just marginally a little more effort in your aggressive shots. 
Conclusions. I had to analyse the footage I shot of Adam and Kieran frame by frame using specialist software from Kenovia and Premiere before I started to notice these little differences I've just shown you. And I shot this footage at 50 frames a second, so that's a lot of footage to go through. It took me a long time. Players in real time don't have that luxury. So in many respects, what our results have shown, T3 testing and human testing, confirm that Jeweler's plastic Super P40 Plus plastic ball does in fact play like a celluloid ball. Not identical, but it plays like it. And whilst I have concerns about the quality control of the plastic ball, and the fact that there are going to be changes made to it which aren't going to be shared to us, there is no doubting that the Jeweler Super P40 Plus plastic ball, these down here, are a massive step in the right direction. And that's not an advert for these balls, that's just to confirm that in our tests the plastic balls are moving in the right direction. So in all the human testing we've done with this plastic ball, testing which involved over 30 people of different ages, abilities and playing style, using different equipment and different situations, not one of them felt they won't be able to make the transition from this Jeweler celluloid ball to this Jeweler plastic ball. And they didn't think it would take too long to do it either. You don't have to take my word for it. Here's Adam and Kieran's feedback after they filmed this video with me. And bear in mind, both these players couldn't stand the original prototype plastic ball. Could you tell a massive difference? No. Sam, couldn't tell an off the fit, Sam. It's a little bit slower, bounce seems to be a little bit higher, it's hard to tell. It's, it's, still, it's negligible. It bounces that little bit slower as it's as it's coming as the ball's coming through, so you've obviously got that little bit more time. It's a little bit slower. So again, it's not an issue for you. Uh, no. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And remember, manufacturers still have until January the 1st, 2016 to get all types of plastic balls so that they play identical to the celluloid one. Now that's not to say that you'll experience the same things and feel the same way as our testers, nor does it tackle the politics of how this ball was introduced. But next time you play, or if you get to play with a plastic ball, consider this saying from Henry Ford. Whether you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. Thank you for watching.